All right, I just wanted to talk about some basic properties of the function y equals e to the x. Um, it's an exponential function, um, but, you know, there's many exponential functions, 5 to the x, 10 to the x, and so forth, but um, e is something that is, you know, used so often. The base of e, this, this e is called the base of the exponential function, that it's given its own special um, letter, e, and it's 2.7 something. So just rep e represents a number. And having it raised to the, the x power is just, you know, if it's e to the 2, it means that number 2.7 something to the second power. But anyways, you should have an idea of what this graph looks like. Okay, that's important to know what it looks like. And this graph looks like this. Okay, it's the graph of y equals e to the x, just a general sketch of it. It passes through the point 0, 1. Okay, I'll mention that again in just a second. So from this graph, we then can, should be able to determine uh, limits of e to the x as x goes to either infinity or negative infinity. So, you know, if someone were asked you to find the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x, remember, all that means is, you know, as x is going to infinity, what is the y value of the function e to the x going to? So basically, as, as x is growing, you can see that y just continues to grow, so therefore, this would be equal to infinity, or you could just write it as does not exist. Because, remember, writing infinity for a limit means the limit doesn't exist since it goes to infinity. That's supposed to say or right there. Um, you could also be asked what's the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x. Okay, And in this case, if I look at my graph, as x goes to negative infinity, um, you know, as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the y value gets closer and closer and closer to zero. So as x goes to negative infinity, that is actually equal to zero. Okay? So just some information about the graph and limits there. Something that you have to know here, a um, few basic properties. Let's say one of these is that uh, e to the zero is equal to one. And anything to the zero is equal to one. But that is kind of the one value you need to know, e to the zero, if you're doing a non-calculator active problem, okay, e to the zero is one. Um, also, these, uh, you know, the function e uh, follows uh, exponent rules. So, for instance, like e to the a times e to the b is equal to e to the a plus b. Usually, we see that same thing with x. So, for instance, you know, it'd be like you know x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. But that works with you know substituting anything in for any of those. Uh, you know, variables. So, for instance, if you had something in a problem that was, you know, e squared times e to the fifth, you know, those would combine together to just be e to the seventh, okay, for example. Um, and, you know, another exponent rule that is very related to this would be something like e to the a over e to the b is equal to e to the a minus b. And again, that works with x to the a over x to the b equals x or e to the a minus, x to the a minus p, but same type of idea here. So if you had something such as, um, you know, e to the third over e to the, say, eighth, you would just do e to the three minus eight, and that would end up being e to the negative five, if you were to simplify that. So, anyways, there's some basic um, properties of the function e to the x, which is the inverse function of natural log of x. And, yeah.